Yes, my presentation was related to immunogenicity, immunogenicity in general, because I think that immunogenicity is not uh, something related or just important for the biosimilars. Uh, immunogenicity is important for all biologic drugs. So we need to be aware of this fact that uh, all biologic drugs make uh, immunogenicity against uh, themselves. So we need uh, to understand where do they come and also how we can monitor and also control this, uh, this immunogenicity. So my presentation was basically saying that the importance of immunogenicity uh, it's something that we have to compare with biosimilars because they, they need to have comparable uh, immunogenicity um, to the original drugs. So basically it's very important for the pharmacists to understand uh, that uh, immunogenicity uh, can be a normal thing, but for biosimilars they have to be comparable or less than the original drug. And then uh, the question of monitoring. I think monitoring therapy is a very important uh, um, issue because it allows the clinician and the pharmacist to understand how the drug is behaving in the, in the body, how the drug is behaving uh, in that specific disease. If it is in the good amount of drug that can really make a good function having a good efficacy there, or even if some side effects might be predicted or not that come from the, the immunogenicity. So at the end of the day, uh, my talk was uh, uh, very broad, but applicable to the biosimilars because they are biologics as the, or, or the reference drugs. The factors that affect immunogenicity are very uh, broad. They are not coming only from the drug, so it's nothing specific only because of the drug or the low quality of the drug. Uh, the drug has an important effect on the, on the immunogenicity, a factor that develops in the medium long term uh, reactions against the drug, but also important is the patient. So the patient uh, if it has an inflammatory disease, if the immune system is highly active in that patient, then um, this type of patients will, more react, will be more reactive against the drug. It's like being vaccinating the patient with that drug. In a vaccine, we want to have the patient reacting a lot to the, to the vaccine. When you have a therapy, we don't want that the patient react so much on that. So the patient, the drug, and then how the drug is given to the patient. So the frequency of the, of the administration, uh, the amount of drug that is given, uh, the conditions of, uh, of administration, if it is an IV drug or a subcutaneous administration drug. So there are many factors. Immunogenicity, it's a combination of several factors. Some are more important than others, but the important thing is that we cannot avoid it at, at all. There will be some immunogenicity, but we need to measure in order to predict what will happen in that patient. The immunogenicity is assessed by um, laboratory um, assays, which must be very specific, very sensitive, should be resistant to the presence of the drug. Um, these assays uh, should be very robust, they sh meaning that they should give a constant um, type of response over time, should not be variable, meaning that when a clinician or a, or a pharmacist asks for these types of assays, they need to be confident about uh, the low variability of these assays. So it is a very important question because uh, we know that there is a lot of variability between laboratories that assess immunogenicity. So the rule is that if you want to do immunogenicity or monitor immunogenicity, you need to monitor with the same laboratory for a long time in order to compare the values. And then the second thing is that together with immunogenicity, you have to compare the pharmacokinetics.
it's very difficult to give a straight answer uh, to a clinician or a pharmacist how the drug is behaving in the, in the body without knowing the concentration of the drug. So at the same time that you measure anti-drug antibodies, it's also important to measure the pharmacokinetics, the amount of drug that is circulating. Thank <laughs> you.